While some people are busy building up emergency finances and others are busy stocking up on supplies to last them longer, it is always a good idea to be ready for both scenarios. Nobody can predict when a calamity will occur, but since we can spot the warning signs, you should be looking for them. However, does this imply that we are ready for the worst case scenario? Maybe, maybe not. Although the exact number is unknown, it is now estimated that more than 3 million preparedness enthusiasts are in the U.S. So, what precisely are people getting ready for? The economic collapse has been named as one of the top probable disasters preppers are prepared for in several studies. The country is steadily losing its industrial base due to the growing debts. Poverty is increasingly encroaching on our lives, a reality many people have yet to grasp. Nevertheless, some Americans know this issue and I hope they take the necessary precautions. 1. Survival Gas Mask Gas masks and respirators can significantly affect severe air pollution, riots, fires, and natural disasters. However, most people have dangerously wrong ideas about these products. Bandanas, surgical masks, and other masks that are too small for the job are not safe enough. It would help if you had at least one reusable P100 mask and a full-face gas mask. We spent hundreds of hours researching to ensure you have the right equipment stored away. Check the link in the description to secure your gas mask so you have access to clean air when you most need it. Gas masks are known as respirators. The replaceable P100 masks that seal tightly around your nose, mouth, and throat are respirators. Half-face versions are also available. Local stores were empty during the 2017 wildfires in California that engulfed major cities with smoke. People rush to get masks from the shops. You can't rely on local stores to have respirator masks available when you need them. Number two, clean water. It is essential to take precautions against illness from unsafe water in an emergency. Use only water that you are sure is safe to drink. You can use bottled, boiled, or treated water for personal hygiene, drinking, cooking, and cleaning. Drinking water can be unsafe or unavailable in an emergency, such as flooding. Do not use water from boilers or radiators as part of your heating system. Floods and other natural disasters can cause damage to drinking water wells and lead to well and aquifer contamination. It is always a good idea to have potable water purification treatment tablets around the house. Check the link in the description to stock up on water purification tablets. Number three, avoid alcohol consumption. Drinking alcohol dehydrates your body, which makes it more challenging to maintain a high water level in the body. Not only that, you consume more of your supplies than needed in an emergency situation, but your coordination and action abilities will be impaired due to the effect of alcohol on your concentration. Number four, self-defense equipment. According to the national crime statistics, approximately 31 million crimes occur annually in the United States. This is a concern for everyone from the average citizen who fears being the victim of crime to the business person who might be traveling with valuable business assets or expensive items. If you want to avoid being victimized, self-defense tools are crucial. Many self-defense options are available, including pepper spray, stun guns, and mace. This allows you to pick the right weapon for your situation. Before you make your choice, you should be familiar with the laws in your area about the permissibility or restrictions of firearms. Number five, a flashlight or lantern. A good flashlight is one of the essential items in your emergency pack. Power will likely be interrupted during an emergency, leaving you without lighting. Keep spare batteries on hand in case the crisis lasts longer than you expect and regularly check your flashlights and batteries to ensure they are in good operating order. 
Since they don't need batteries, dynamo or hand crank flashlights are a fantastic alternative. Check out the emergency survival flashlights and lanterns we have in the description. Number six, move away from the big cities if possible. Millions of people move from the countryside to urban centers every year, both within their country and abroad. Many of these people migrate to improve their lives and seek new opportunities. However, if a disaster such as an attack from a foreign country or widespread rioting due to protests against the government should take place, it will most likely begin in cities and not in the countryside. So it is safer to live in rural areas where there are not so many people in one place. Migration pressures are hazardous for rural populations whose livelihoods depend on agriculture. They are more vulnerable, have high natural resources dependency, and have limited ability to manage and cope with risk. It is impossible to ignore the families who leave the land and take their bags with them. Number seven stock up on vitamins. In the worst circumstances, having a fully stocked pantry, fridge, freezer, or freezer is good. In an emergency such as illness, storms, or hard times, having a fully stocked pantry can keep your family safe and well-fed. It is essential to know the difference between panic shopping and being prepared. You should have enough food and supplies, including medications, to last for two weeks in the event of quarantine. You don't need to hoard toilet paper or other essentials. Francis Largeman Roth, RDN, nutritionist and author of Smoothies and Juices, Prevention Healing Kitchen, and Lainey Yunkin, MSRD and LDN, founder of Lainey Yunkin Nutrition, spoke to us about the best ways to stock your fridge, freezer, and cupboard. We have a few suggestions as well as some of theirs. Your medicine cabinet is an essential as your pantry, Keep a supply of all medications and supplements for two weeks and keep your cold and flu relief medications on hand. Stock up on vitamins now. Check the link in the description and make sure you have enough stored away at all times. Number eight, extra gasoline. It's crucial to be prepared in an emergency. You will need more gas than five to 10 gallons to start your generator in a crisis. However, you will still need enough fuel to last a long day. Gas stations become overcrowded in a significant outage like those caused by a hurricane. They may also run out of gas very quickly. To see the status of gas stations, you can use a gas supply tracker during storms. A stockpile will give you power and security so you don't need to fight panicked people for the last remaining tanks. If gasoline is left in the carburetor for too long, it can turn to varnish and gum up. This can cause problems with the generator starting and other issues. It is essential to replace your gasoline storage at least once a year to have a ready-to-go fuel when you need it most without fuel stabilizers gas can go wrong for weeks. The stabilizer is essential if you want to keep your gasoline the same every few months. Number nine, a community disaster preparedness plan. Once you have a group of interested people and a place to get them talking, it is time to begin thinking about the community's plan. Don't get too involved in the details. It is essential to make people aware of possible disasters in their community and to prepare them to assist and care for one another during a crisis. Stripling stated that it is essential to realize that planning for these types of things is about more than just one document. You will only have a little time to read when disasters strike. Preparing your group to adapt to any emergency is crucial. Building your group into a team capable of responding to all situations is essential. He identified three main components of a solid community disaster preparedness plan. Everyone must have multiple ways to reach each other. However, in an emergency, cellular networks may be overwhelmed. Text messages and walkie-talkies are much more reliable than mobile calls and use less data. 
Old-fashioned landlines work well in all cases as they can be used without power. Number 10, regular physical and mental prepping routine. A traumatic experience can cause a lot of loss, leading to anxiety and uncertainty about the future. You might have experienced a significant change in your environment. It cannot be easy to adjust to new situations. You can reduce stress and anxiety by being emotionally prepared for any emergency or disaster. It will make managing stress throughout the day easier and help you get through difficult times. You can also recover faster from trauma and have fewer long-term side effects. Learning and using healthy coping skills in everyday life is essential to maintaining good mental health. These skills will also help you to cope in emergencies. It is essential to have strong support networks in your life. This is especially true during emergencies and disasters. It is necessary to take the time to create and maintain strong support networks throughout your life. Ask for help whenever you need it. It is possible to accept help from family and friends, which can lead to a supportive community. In conclusion, despite the fact that life is unpredictable, you can avoid calamity if you remain cautious and well prepared. With the correct planning, a possible government or financial catastrophe is reduced to a manageable setback.